starting this thing off, how would you describe what it is exactly that you do or what do you talk about on your channel? I am sharing silence. <laughs> and that's difficult. <laughs> um, I'm sharing a, a holistic meditative message. A message that uh, is pointing towards a possibility a a possibility that holism can awaken to itself that holism can awaken out of the dream of separation and that is basically what i am talking about when i do my videos um I see myself as a, a kind of hmm, I simply make myself available uh, for something to happen through through me. So usually when I do those videos, I simply just sit down and turn on the camera and then I wait for something to happen. And then Oftentimes, a sentence is suddenly popping into my mind. And then I just simply say that sentence, and from there it unfolds. Yeah. And, um, and I am listening as much as those who are watching my videos. Mm -hmm. I am listening just as much to what is being said. Um, so it's it's not really me sharing. Uh, it is more the whole that is sharing through this this in individual, um, and then one might ask why why this this being, and I really don't know. But what I do know is that. Some 15 years ago, something suddenly happened. And um, the way that this human being used to, to perceive everything, to used to perceive itself, suddenly imploded, I would say. And, um, and it was kind of revealed that That, that every single human being is the whole in, in, in numerous expressions and that, that this being also is the whole. Um, and then this channel opened up within me so that the whole started to, to speak through this being. And in the beginning, I was only sharing in, in Danish. I am, I'm sitting in Denmark, in, in the Northern Europe, in Scandinavia. And I am, uh, I'm born here in Denmark. So I started sharing in Danish. And I did that for a couple of years. And then one day, I said to myself, perhaps I should try in English. Uh, but I was uns un unsure that my if my English was good enough. Uh, but I tr I just simply started up and, and I tried and and my English has been improving the last year or s something like that. It's uh, just simply from 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 speaking English. Um, so so that's 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 kind of the answer to that question, what I'm doing. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it seems to, it seems to resonate the message with a lot of people. Uh, and I'm very humble about that. Uh, I, I get a lot of uh, very positive feedback and, 
And ultimately, it's not it's not me who is doing the good. The, the, the good is when another human being is opened, is open to the message and and use the message within themselves to find uh, the whole within them. Not 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 a whole, but the the <laughs> Not not H O L E, but W H. Yeah, English, English. Yeah, right. it's English. <laughs> I when, got you. There. When, when, yeah, good. Uh, finding this this holism within themselves. Uh, the only thing I can do is just to share and. So so when I get these feedbacks I'm I'm very humble about that so yeah. and in a sense I cannot not do this sharing mm-hmm. um when this the wholeness opened up within me a a part of that was and it and an unlimited boundless peace within me at the same time and and joy and then after a couple of years i it dawned on me that i i could simply not just sit in my own joy and in my own peace and I, I simply had to, to 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 try to give away because this this joy this joy and this peace is not my my peace my joy this joy and peace belongs to humanity so I simply had to start sharing this see if anyone resonated seeing if I was able to verbalize. And it is difficult to verbalize, but as I said, it is not really me who are doing it. Mm-hmm. I'm simply making myself available to, to this message so that it can flow through me. Mm. And as I see it, this is the trajectory that the human race is on. We are on this, this pathway towards coming to know ourselves as an expression of the whole and in doing so this peace and this joy will spread among human beings and we are in desperate need of that right now yeah yeah. (laughs) we are yeah i think it's because we all deep down somewhere in our being yearn for that connection yeah it's just that like we don't know how to find it we have a little bit of misplaced uh priorities a little bit you know a little bit a little bit (laughs) (laughs) to say the least perhaps perhaps a little bit more than a little bit (laughs) yeah and it's just it's not our fault per se Mm. necessarily i mean you could say it is but i what i'm saying it's like nobody is uh the bad guy i guess you could say in this it's not we shouldn't blame ourselves no 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 that would not do yeah. any good. Yeah. But it is the reason why I feel as though a lot of us are um, a little bit off our rocker, you could say. Mm-hmm. I, we all yearn for that connection to a greater whole. Yeah. And so would you say when we do have that revelation of connecting to a greater sense of self or no self, you could say, uh, with that comes that joy in peace you speak of, it just kind of comes along the way. Yeah, it does. So when this revelation happens, um, well, in, in, in this being, uh, it was a, I don't know really how to describe it, but, but it was of such a magnitude that I could never go back to who I thought I was, there was, there were, there were no way back, uh, because it was so obvious. But at the same time, 
uh, there was still a lot of conditioning, old conditioning, and a lot of it was stored in the body as emotions. Uh, so, so I would say at, at first, after a few months, I thought that this is it. <laughs> no more. There's no much more to be done. But then slowly the old patterns, they started to reemerge, to reemerge. But, but that was actually not a problem at all. Uh, I saw it as an invitation to, to dive into all the mind stuff, to learn about what was really going on, to learn about what suffering really is, to learn about how belief systems are structured, where they come from, and how they influence the emotional system of the body. So, so it, it, for the past 15 years, has been a, a, a journey deep, deep into the human psyche. And that journey continues to, to go on. But, but as this journey unfolds and all these mental patterns are revealed, and how how they operate on a subconscious level. When insight into this is happening, then then these old patterns are dissolving, and and when they dissolve, they are replaced by this peace and this joy. And this peace and this joy is being seen. So has always been there, but just seemingly been covered up by all this mental noise, all this conditioning, all that, all the noise in society. Um, so as insight into these mental structures are being revealed, they simply dissolve and, and, and the peace and the joy reveals itself to be the true foundation of, of being itself. Mm. So, uh, yeah. And I, and I, I understand now from, from, from talking to others that it's difficult to take that leap of faith to seeing this, that I am, I am the whole expressing itself as this being uh, and and I and I do understand that whatever happened to me 15 years ago that was of a certain what you call it magnitude I don't really know what the answer is but there was no doubt in me after that and that was of course in some way was a A blessing for me, um, for there were there, there, there were no way back for 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 me from that point on. There were no doubts, and and that is oftentimes what people struggle with. It is they 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 sort of fluctuate yeah. between the old conditioning that is re-emerging and then. There can be periods with a clear seeing and it feels obvious, but then the old conditioning is covering this clear seeing up again and, and this fluctuation can be a fr frustrating thing to, to experience. And that is also why I am sharing this. I am hoping to be able to to build some trust so that more humans can take this final step into what I call truth. Um, 
yeah. that look like? What is this final step to somebody that doesn't know any better? How would yeah. you describe the final step? Is it like a letting go of control, a total submission or surrender, kind of letting your hands off the steering wheel a little bit? Like, how would you describe uh -huh. that? Yeah. That's a beautiful question. There is no final answer to that because if there were, it would be easy. <laughs> mm. But but I will say this much that it feels like it is it is a step not forward, but it is a sort of a backward step. Mm. I, I'm stepping out of what I thought I was, uh -huh. and then. I am somehow observing all this mind chatter and this clear observing suddenly becomes aware of itself as this clear observing. And from then on, it is this clear observing that I am that is just simply experiencing everything that this human being is doing. So it is sort of stepping out of a backward step. And, and I like that metaphor because anything else would imply that it is what I think I am that is doing it, that is reaching out for something. Then I think it's better to, to describe it like this. I'm stepping out of who I thought I was. Yeah. And then this clear seeing suddenly becomes aware of itself as that clear seeing. Mm. I don't know what you what you say to that description. <laughs> um, you could also, <laughs> what came up in my mind was not only a step back, but maybe a, so say, this is a metaphor, obviously, but our life is yeah, mov yeah. moving horizontally. We take a step vertical. So the horizontal. Oh yeah, horizontal. yes, yes. It's almost like you're looking down, right? Yeah, yeah. Beautiful, absolutely. Yeah, a a. Um, it's a different dimension. A, a view from above. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, it's the same idea of what you said. I think yeah. it just paints a different picture of then yeah. stepping back. You know, because yes. that implies. Uh, uh, you, you're going backwards. Like nobody wants to go backwards. You know? No. Okay. But but not yes. Okay. Not not stepping back. Then then I would say stepping out of. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and well, well, whether you do that backwards or up, like you described, it's perfect. Mm. Yeah. But it comes down to a great observance, like being able to. Just simply witness, right? Just a kind of seeing the comings and going of this bodily vessel and all the phenomena that comes with it. It's just being yeah. able to almost, almost watch it like a movie, right? Yes. A little less attachment, a little less expectation to outcome. Um, and mm. from that, I feel is a sense of ease in the process and all of our ups yes. and downs. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 you said uh, a sense uh, uh, witnessing, yes, and that is why I often just simply close my eyes because this witnessing is not a, a, a visual, not necessarily a visual witnessing. It is more a complete witnessing of the entire being, and I find it useful to sometimes just close my eyes so that. Uh, conditioned mind don't get distracted and then uh, just simply rest and it becomes a sort of a meditation yeah. e even though there might be activity uh, just simply the two of us sitting here and chatting and and it it becomes a meditation where i simply just enjoy the the being part of it the witnessing yes the witnessing yeah beautiful so to somebody that has no idea what we're talking about, I guess, or maybe a beginner or layman, where would you mm -hmm. recommend that somebody start? They say, oh, that sounds all great. That sounds dandy. 
But where yeah. do I start in this process? Would you recommend meditation, uh, self inquiry? Like, uh, I know it's probably different. There's no cookie cutter explanation, uh, but uh, if we could try to generalize it here, what would yeah. you say? Yeah, there's no doubt that it, it depends a lot upon which personality. Uh, and there is also within the human being a lot of what we could call uh, neurodiversity. Mm -hmm. uh, some people are simply more sensitive than others. Uh, so, so there are no cookie cutter, no. Um, for those who, who are struggling with stress, with a heightened uh, energy level, there is no doubt that meditation is uh, beneficial because it helps to lower lower the the um, intention level, not not the intention, the energy level. Uh, what I have learned is that when the stress level is rising then the, the old patterns are re-emerging automatically and we are taken over by old conditioning. And if the stress level is uh, even higher, then suddenly we lose our own autonomy and we feel like we have been taken over by the emotions, by habits. And, and if we are in a state like that, it is very important to, to, to lower that that level, and we can do that by uh, meditation. Uh, otherwise, let's see what could be beneficial. Just a moment. I would say that it is not really that important what you are doing. The important thing is that there is a curiosity. If there is a curiosity, a very deep-seated curiosity, that, that, that there is this sensation, I got to know. Mm. I simply got to know what this is, what I am, what it is that is going on, what it means to be a human being. If this curiosity is there, I would say that you cannot go wrong. Yeah. Uh, and honesty, honesty towards yourself is also important. Uh, so curiosity, honesty, and the last ingredient is patience. <laughs> mm. Honesty, curiosity, patience. I like that. I yeah. had humility as well. Yeah, it, it, that's important because otherwise, yeah, it, you, <laughs> the ego might be might be inflated. When <laughs> so, yeah, humility, absolutely, also, yeah. But yeah. but but if the curiosity is there, I think that when when some something starts to dawn, I think that the humility will arise on its own. Yeah, when you discover the miracle that this is the incredible miracle that you are uh, here on the physical level a universe that has been existing for 14 billion years they say ever more sophisticated beings and it has taken the universe almost 14 billion years before the universe was able to create this and that. And right now, Gary, we are sitting here as an expression of the universe. And that's just amazing. Yeah. That's simply amazing. Seriously. Yeah. <sighs> It doesn't make logical sense. It actually doesn't make any rational sense. 
And that's well, the beauty it, of it. It's the mystery. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is the mystery that that this being, everything within this being, the physical being is actually has been made inside a star at some point yeah. uh, in, a, in the furnace of a star. And, and then this, this is awareness when it discover itself as the awareness and it discovered that there is not, there is not someone who is aware, aware, the awareness is aware. And this awareness is also a mystery to itself but it's alive and we are here. It's amazing. I don't know that I, I might have get sidetracked there, but <laughs> that's how it goes. I don't even remember uh, how we started <laughs> that one, but it's very true. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. At the yeah. miracle. That's really all it's you could, uh, at a certain point, man, that's really what it comes down to. It's just a sense of awe. Just being completely awestruck. Yes, yes, and and when when that happens, then all the so-called problems <laughs> of everyday life, right. yeah, they, they 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 don't go away, but they are certainly no longer big problems. Yeah, they, a they, less serious. they become yeah less serious. Yeah, 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 because it is seen that nothing can eventually harm this miracle mm -hmm. cannot be done <laughs> that's a big one yeah. that's a huge part of the miracle because yeah when it comes down to it we're all going to die and we think that's yeah. the greatest form of harm that could uh it could happen to us mm. but then we realize like wait a second we don't actually die no <laughs> no because when you do identify with the cosmos it's like, well, the yeah. cosmos is always going to be the cosmos. It's like, yeah, my Absolutely. humanly form may perish, but yeah, yeah we're well, greater I, than that. Right now, I just saw your shirt there. It's perfect. This is this the cosmos. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> it's the cosmos. I, I just realized now. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. That, that's tied. The, the, the fear of dying is tied with uh, this... Uh, this misunderstanding, this this identification with with the thinking mind, and and uh, and of course, when 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 this being, when this body dies, then all of the memories from Hans Christian is going to evaporate. But that's not who I am. Yeah, I am the whole, and as you said, the whole is not going to die. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the gospel. That's the good news right there. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And the human being needs to hear that right now because we are definitely a threat to ourselves. Or ourselves. Not ultimately, but we are cost causing a lot of suffering uh, towards ourselves unnecessary suffering yeah. and all of it comes from this misidentification so mm. so it is the message is important it's not my message and there are a lot of other beings also sharing a similar message and more and more are are coming forth and it's so beautiful yeah yeah amen to that how would you describe how we do it to ourself? How are we causing our own suffering and hampering our ability to see that greater whole? And why is that the essence of our suffering? Why does it all come from that, would you say? I would say that all suffering is fear of death. Not necessarily a physical death, but what we could call ego death. Uh, not, 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 not real ego death, because an ego death would be a good thing, but the ego fears that its belief systems 
would be attacked. And if one's belief systems are being attacked, then it feels like a kind of a death. Uh, the ego fears being ridiculed in public. The ego fears losing its possessions that it is identifying with. And all of these things is to the ego a kind of a, a small death. And uh, because of that, uh, it activates the, 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 the fight or flight system in the brain. And when that is activated, we feel fear, we feel anxiety, we feel suffering. And um, all of it is a result of this false identification. Uh, with our social status, our job, our idea about ourselves. So, so that is, we are, we are not really causing our own suffering. The suffering is a symptom yeah. of this, of this misunderstanding. So, so trying to do something about the suffering, uh, that that's 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 not a a a, a sustainable uh, or that that's not something that will last. That would uh, that's quick fixes, and the, the human mind love quick fixes. But and they might just give you a a, a good feeling for for a moment uh, when when you find something to distract yourself with that will cover up this. The suffering, so you temporarily forget it. But the suffering is not the problem. The suffering is a symptom. It is something that arises because of the misunderstanding, because of this misidentification. So what I tend to do is I tend to see suffering as an alarm bell, an alarm bell that says, there is something here that I need to inquire into. There is some kind of a belief in my subconscious hidden somewhere in the mind that, and this belief is in conflict with reality. This belief says that what is going on is wrong. And when I say that what is going on is wrong, then I have separated myself from reality. And in this separation, fear and anxiety are, is arising as suffering. And then I use this suffering as an alarm bell to see if I can dig out, dig out the belief, dig out the, the ideas that are hidden somewhere. And, and sometimes... It takes a couple of days and I linger on it and meditate on it. And then suddenly it dawns on me, ah, it's that. And then when I dive into it, then, then I dismantle it simply by putting the light of attention on it. And I say to myself, this idea, this belief was founded at a time where I thought that I was someone else. I'm glad I found it now. Put it out into the open. See it for what it is. No need to blame myself for anything. It's simply just the remnants of a false belief, an old false belief. And then when it's it's been put out into the open, it can no longer operate uh, on its own. So so the suffering goes away when when that is seen. And that was what I just described here. That was basically what I was doing in very intensely, in intensively, uh, for the first five years after the initially in, initial opening. Really going through all the mental stuff. Every time I felt there was some kind of suffering, asking myself, "What is it that I believe? What is it that I am saying to myself? This is wrong. This should not be." Because the problem is, it is. 
<laughs> so I, I used to say that every time that I am in opposition to reality, to truth, to what is, every time I'm in opposition to that, I lose every time. <laughs> and yeah. when I lose, when I lose, the suffering is there. And when that is seen very clearly, then yes, surrendering is happening. And I let go of this opposition or, or this, this opposition to truth. And I say, yes, I want truth. I want truth because anything else is absurd. Truth is what is. Truth is this. And it is beautiful, as we were just talking about for a moment ago. Truth is this universe unfolding. And we are sitting here as this universe, talking to each other. What are we? Are we 4,000, 5,000 kilometers apart? That is three or 4,000 miles or something like that. It's amazing. Yeah. It's a miracle. Yeah. So, and, 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 and Gary, you and I, we would never have met if yeah. this, you would have lived a completely a life. But, but now, friends, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Wonderful. Hmm. I don't know if I got carried away again, but I. No, that's okay. That's what these conversations are for. We're carrying each yeah. other away. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, would you say the key is to be able to see that miracle? In all moments of our life, even in the most dark and decrepit moments when you think that it's not supposed to be this way, the key is to be able to see the miracle in the darkness, the light yes. in the darkness. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That was why I mentioned uh, patience, because that is, in most cases, that is a gradual unfolding. Uh, because if there is a... A, something happens, Some a, a, a friend dies or something like that. At first, it can feel very difficult, and all the old patterns are, are re-emerging. But then remembering, going back and re-remember what has been seen as the truth, and then put... Mm, well, how to say it? Commit to the truth. Then, then, then slowly, this ability to see the miracles in everything, that ability is, is widening, is broadening, and, and slowly, we are able to, to see the miracle even in the most terrible situations. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it's about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It seems like to me, this may be an oversimplification, but this is just, I'm a simple minded man. So I'm going to mm -hmm. go with it. It's a two step process. Like we get the glimpse, we get the taste into mm -hmm. our greater whole, a sense of being, that goes beyond our um, conditionings. You know, we kind of feel what that feels like. Some kind of great revelation comes in. And then step two is we go with that. We know it's a thing. So it's we, we refine ourselves. We observe more. We witness more. What is hampering us from mm -hmm. being able to be at that and see the miracle at all times. Like step two, that's the, like you could say that's the hard part is being able to deal with our, our darkness and our conditionings and um, refine ourselves to see the light. Um, yeah, that's different for all of us, but I think that's the, the simple two step process that I can present. We get the taste and then we go with that. And the thing is too, right? You can agree or disagree. Once you get the taste, I don't think there's any other choice but to follow the path. No. I, I can't I, go back. <laughs> I, I don't disagree at all. No. And that was a beautiful description. Uh, you, you came with a very beautiful I, 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 I and and you say that that you would like to keep it simple. And that is actually a 
a great strength, the ability to keep it simple because the mind, the mind loves to complicate things. Yeah. So it is actually difficult to keep it simple, but it is important because if the mind is allowed to make it complicated, there is no end to how to make it complicated. Yeah. <laughs> so that was very beautiful, Gary. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Would you say that that's what happens is that we actually simplify our life? Like think about monks. They, mm. they live a great simplification in their lifestyle. So would you say it's simple in theory, but also what happens is in our lifestyle, at least this is personally speaking, I find in my lifestyle, I've just needed to simplify my life so that it doesn't get complicated and I lose the sense of that miracle, even though we never lose the miracle. That's the thing. Mm. But it's yeah, almost yeah. like we can lose sight and forget. Um, so would you say that's what happens uh, in one's life or in your life is just a, a great simplification? I, yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that that will happen in most cases mm. that uh, it is seen and that all this, all these things, all this stuff, I don't need that. Yeah. It just, it takes a lot of effort just to maintain it. And it, it, it is a, a huge paradox that, we we are building storage rooms to, <laughs> to put away stuff that we are and we are buying just to be able to buy new stuff <laughs> so there is a, absolutely a simplification yes yeah. uh, also because it is clearly seen that the happiness is not is not within more the happiness lies within the ability to deeply appreciate the simple things. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and it is also kind of, if, if, if we have a lot of stuff, we, we have to divide our attention towards, and nothing really gets appreciated. Everything becomes more or less uh, irrelevant but but as we simplify things the ability to truly appreciate the simple thing a flower for instance a butterfly it, 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 that ability will absolutely uh, increase so yes I, I'm pretty sure that this simplification of the everyday life will happen for most people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> so I had to take a deep breath on that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it makes life more beautiful, right? It does, yeah. And the beauty about it also is that We, we, this consumerism is is destroying the earth. No, I'm not really sure. The earth will be okay in the end, but hmm. we are we are simply consuming too much. So everybody will benefit from a simpler life. The problem is that to the ego, a simpler life is not attractive. Yeah. <laughs> but the ego does not know anything about that. Mm. So eventually, it is the trajectory we are on, the human race. I don't know how long it will take, though. I have no idea. Do you think it's an inevitability? Uh, if if the human race does not go extinct, self well, self made extinction or some other nature catastrophe, it is inevitable. Yeah. Uh, it is the impulse within. Uh, it is the, the the whole that wants to know itself, uh, and the suffering is what drives us the way. Yeah. Uh, uh, towards that, that so it is inevitable. Uh, 
if we don't go extinct. I don't think that we will go extinct, but I do fear somewhat that we are perhaps might cause some great deal of suffering to us, all of us. We already are in some sense, but mm -hmm. I do not hope that. I hope that it will not happen, but but that is the trajectory. Yeah, how long it will take and and what it will look like before uh, the human race is there, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. 50 years, a thousand years, I don't know. And it, it really, really doesn't matter. Yeah. The, it's the universe again unfolding and 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 in the scale of the universe 50 years or 1000 years is nothing yeah. so mm. i believe it's inevitable as well it just seems yeah. like it it seems like if it's our nature and it's the truth with a capital t absolutely yeah we can only hide from the truth for so long yeah it doesn't make any sense to be incongruent. Eventually, we're going to be put back in alignment with, you could say, God. We were eventually, we strayed so far, we currently are, but eventually the suffering is going to lead us back in. It just seems like, yeah, yeah it doesn't make any sense not to. Like, it actually makes more sense to me, even though it might not seem like it when you turn on Fox News and go <laughs> on social media. But yeah. when you go within yourself, it makes more sense to me that inevitably we're all going to be in alignment to this uh, this essence within ourselves, all of us collectively. Yeah. yeah. Right? It doesn't make any sense for us to be living in darkness and suffering ignorance forever. It just doesn't, doesn't it compute. It doesn't make any sense. You are completely right. Yeah. Yeah. So like you said, what's it going to take? How long is it going to take? It's gonna eventually we'll get there, but yeah, I don't know. It doesn't matter, like you said. All that matters is we find that within ourselves here and now, and that's it. It'll take care of itself. We'll submit to that greater whole, and that greater whole will do its work on other people. And that's the thing too, is right. We can't yeah. we can't save the world. How we save the world is we save ourselves. That's really the greatest thing that we can do that's for it. yes ourselves and but everybody else is yeah work on yourself. That's yeah, that's it. <laughs> Yeah. And and I and I do I do understand that some some people might think that it sounds strange that it does when when we when we say that it really doesn't matter how long it takes. But but the reason why it doesn't matter how long it takes is that this change it cannot be forced. It is impossible to force it, because if you would try to force it, it would just be another expression of trying to manipulate, trying to... Uh, so, so it cannot be forced. It, it has to unfold on its own accord. And, and, and when that is seen clearly, that it has to unfold, then we have to say... It doesn't matter how long it takes, because we have to commit to that truth that it has to unfold on its own accord. Otherwise, if I were to try to force this message, then I would start simply being a preacher. I would start to think about how could I try to manipulate people to believe in what I am saying, etc., etc., and that would not do and do any good that would just be a, an, an another kind of religion or belief system or it 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 will not help any so so i have simply committed to stay uh, to 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 stay with this this clear seeing and be committed to just being a channel for for verbalizing what is seen, and then everything will unfold as it unfolds. And I haven't got any idea about, perhaps it will take 300 years before the videos I am making really becomes 
watched or listened to. I, I don't know, but I don't care. To, to me, it doesn't matter. I simply just have to, to speak, to say these things, and then it will happen as it happens. Uh, so it cannot be forced, and that is why it doesn't matter yeah. how long it will take, because that is the only way. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. Damn. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, I don't know, man. Do you want to start to wrap this thing up? I think that's a good note to start to, you know, start to conclude this whole thing, mm -hmm. this, this whole dual channeling. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, I would like uh, to do that. It's, it's going to happen. But it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm with you on that. Yes. Uh, and I will say to you also, Gary, that if you would like, we could do uh, a this a, a, another recording in a year or something like that. And yeah. then we can see what has happened yeah. uh, through that period. So if you want, if, if you're interested, we could do it again. So For sure. But yeah, I think yes, it's great. Absolutely. And I truly enjoy connecting with and have friends mm -hmm. on a global scale that's amazing yeah simply really amazing is. yeah i i will i would like to wrap it up by just simply you and me sitting quiet for perhaps a minute yeah that is i think as i said initially i'm only sharing silence um and let's see if I can come up with a question that we can, and the viewers can sit with just a moment. Yes, okay. When all ideas about who we think we are, when all those ideas are put aside, what is left? And I will like to emphasize that this question is not to be answered uh, in words. Just simply sit with what is left. Sit quiet with that. Witnessing, as you said earlier, Gary. So let's do that for a minute. You and I together and all of the viewers also. So I'm not timing this, so I haven't got any idea. But never mind. That was beautiful, Gary. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, I was. Uh, I was thinking we were gonna just. I don't know. I could have got lost in the meditation. <laughs> yeah, me good. too. Yeah, that was good. So hmm. perfect. I want to answer the question, but I'm not. I'll leave it up. No, it was, please it don't. Please don't. Up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah please don't keep it to yourself <laughs> yeah that's good though. yeah yeah well i appreciate you coming on here hans uh sharing I, your time effort and wisdom yeah. thank you i appreciate you 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 inviting me very much gary thank you thank you this was beautiful yeah. um thank you for anybody that listened this long i don't know what else to say Peace and love, peace and love to you, peace yeah. and love to the audience, and uh, let's keep on keeping on. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you.